Hi, I'm Nick and I'm here with Emtron and we're here for PRI 2023. So we have the new dash with new software and we have another new piece of software which is the logging software. And a new, a really cool new feature of that is, is that it has 3D track map. So a normal track map would be like a 2D plot, but the 3D track mapping would allow you to look at it from a, th a third dimension and you can see elevation changes and things like that. What I'm really excited about myself is the new firmware for the ECUs. What we've done is we've expanded the torque modeling features of the ECU. And one, one of the reasons why Mtron started using the torque modeling and it's been in previous, uh, previous versions of the ECU is that we've been following essentially what the OEM has been doing, where a model allows us to dictate exactly how we want to control the torque in the engine by dictating actual torque inputs into the ECU. Why that would be really important would be for, say, something like a traction control situation or like a gearbox control system or, and things like that. And so the newest features of the new firmware that we've released is we've now expanded the usage of that torque model in all different areas of the ECU. In fact, you can even use it in user function controls and user controls to sort of leverage that any way that you want. A couple of examples of torque management and why it would be advantageous would be, say, cars with weak gearboxes or even just automatic transmission control in general. You might have a system that is dictating torque to the engine management system to control the torque through a shift and things like that. That would be like a very modern control system that now the ECU is actually compatible with. Instead of, say, guessing and adjusting ignition timing or adjusting a cut or adjusting a throttle position, now you can just tell the ECU what the torque target is. But not only that, we have full control over that. So you can actually, say, prioritize uh, ignition retard, cutting, or throttle control. Calculating torque is more than just populating a table and guessing a, a number in this ECU. It's looking at air mass and fuel mass, and also we validate that with the frictional losses and gains for retard and cut gains. The torque model is extremely accurate. It will generate torque values once you validate it on the dyno and power numbers, which then can be looked at later when you're at the track, which will also further then compensate for all other conditions and changes that you might make. You could have charge temperature fluctuations, you can have boost target changes and things like that, and you can look at that log data. Say you have a time attack car and you know a real world example where you know you're trying to make more power, you're trying to run the car harder, and you know your air temps are going up and the car is not performing like the way that you wanted it to. Well the data might show you then that you're making you know, 100 kilowatts less or something like that and you can look and see exactly why. It might be because of air temp or compensation happening like that, but it will give you the actual torque reduction. It'll tell you the actual number. Another real world, world example could be a driver comes in and gives you some feedback saying that the car has more or less power or like that they went out and the car was you know fast for a moment but then slow slow down you can come back and you can look at the data and see exactly why that was happening you can overlay the data versus other log data that you have and see why the torque reduction was actually happening so another advantage of the torque model is being able to limit the torque any way that you want now so there could be situations where a car might be used in racing for power to weight classing where they be they be needing to run a strict limit on torque or power so it could be that easy where you would just type in a torque limit into the engine. You could have a car with a gearbox that has a limit on torque where certain gears maybe you need to limit the, the, uh, the torque through the gearbox or maybe it's a, an engine that is sensitive with torque at uh, in certain RPM ranges where you need to ramp the torque up in a, in a certain way. You can do that all through the torque management system. So the torque calculation is happening all the time and because of that it's much easier to implement these torque limits. Instead of doing some like guessing how to reduce the torque or you know doing like a, a ignition comp or a throttle closure or something like that by using the torque limiting in the ECU the system will adjust also for the conditions that are, are given for that moment in time you could have 
different ambient conditions, you could have uh, different altitudes, things like that. The torque limit will follow because it's calculating all the time. Another very flexible thing that you can do with the ECU is control how the torque limiting happens and also prioritize how the torque limiting happens. So you can control it with ignition retard, cutting, or also throttle control, and or a combination of all three, but also prioritize how that is being used in what order. Additionally, you can scale the torque for a gear ratio, and you might want to do that for gearbox protection, you might want to do that because you're trying to maintain attractive force or attractive effort at the tire or something like that. The new firmware is available for download off the website. You can download it from there to check it out and kind of poke through the software. Um, otherwise, you can contact us at support at mtronaustralia.com.au.